The Tennessee Titans need to sit Will Levis for the rest of the season. I'll explain why on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Roland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We got a lot to discuss on today's show. Number one, the Titans need to sit Will Levis down for the rest of the year. Also, who should play at quarterback then, Ryan Tannehill or Malik Willis? And then finally, is anyone on this offensive line good enough to bring to next year's team? We're going to discuss all of that. Before we do, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round. Always for free. Make sure you get subscribed. Stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. Shout out to my everydayers out there. Listen, Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you. Let me know who you guys are down below. But I got a lot of great stuff for you coming this week as well. Tomorrow, should Derrick Henry come back? Crossover Thursday with Locked on Seahawks. Game plan Friday to talk about how the Titans can win on Christmas Eve. Again, make sure you get subscribed. Stay subscribed. It's your team every day. Day. Throw a thumbs up on the video, and I don't ask for a lot. The show's free all year round. I never ask for anything from you guys. If you wouldn't mind, if you use Apple Podcast, throw a five-star review on the podcast. I would appreciate it quite a bit. Be a little Christmas gift back to me. But with that being said, guys, let's dive into today's show. The Titans need to sit Will Levis down the rest of the year, and I have three, three primary reasons why the Titans need to do so. But at the end of the day, what matters here is he doesn't need to play the rest of the season. So number one, Mike Vrabel came out on Monday and said, it's an injury that is very similar to Ryan Tannehill's last year, which was a high ankle sprain. Vrabel said, quote, I think the mechanism is the same. It's similar. Those are things that make it difficult. Those are things that come up as you're getting tackled or you're in a pile or anything like that. Same thing he has been dealing with. So Levis has been on the injury report for a few weeks with an ankle issue. And again, it's similar to what Ryan Tannehill dealt with last year. If you remember, Ryan Tannehill got knocked out for two weeks in the middle of the season when Malik Willis played against Houston and Kansas City. And then Tannehill came back only to get knocked out for the final three games of the year, coincidentally, in week 15, it was against the Los Angeles Chargers. So we hurt the ankle, was out two games, came back later, re-injured the ankle, was out the final three games, and then had to have tightrope surgery on his ankle in the offseason. And then Tannehill came back this year and hurt the ankle again. So for me, this is about long-term health. For Will Levis, if this is a similar injury to Ryan Tannehill last year, and Tannehill initially missed two games, well, then Levis is going to miss at least one game. Levis is younger, 10 years younger, so he should heal all of that. So let's assume that Levis should probably miss one game, all right? Well, that means you come back, you got two games left, and Levis is not going to be 100%. So it's not just a long-term health thing. If Will Levis was healthy right now, you don't let him play because, no, He's not going to be 100% the rest of the year. So even if he does go back out there and play, you're putting him at way more risk than you would have otherwise. So whether it be the long-term health, whether it be the short-term health, it doesn't matter either way. The smart move is to not let Will Levis play on this high ankle sprain no matter what. And look, I get it. Mike Vrabel wants to give the appearance that Will Levis could come back. It may be for competitive reasons. I think that it's really for locker room reasons. You don't want guys in the locker room to think, oh, Will Levis could come and play, but he's not putting his body on the line because the organization values him more. Same thing with Jeffrey Simmons. Vrabel's not going to come out and say, oh, we're shutting down Will for the rest of the year. Oh, we're shutting down Simmons for the rest of the year. He's not going to do that. So it's no surprise he said, quote, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that necessarily weighs into the decision right now. Talking about whether Levis and the record for the Titans and being out of the playoffs should matter. 
He says, we want to make sure that he can protect himself. He can do his job up to the expectations we have. Uh, really, the most important thing is that the player can protect themselves out there during the game. It's Monday right now. He swore like a lot of guys. We'll see how things go. I know that sounds like Vrabel wants to put him back out there, but I'm telling you, Vrabel wants to say that to keep the culture right, to let guys know that if players are healthy enough to play, they will play. But you have to know behind the scenes, they're like, we cannot let this guy go back out here. With Even if he's healthy enough to play, he's still not going to be at 100%. And behind this offensive line, there's no reason to risk it. And as we were saying, the Titans' playoff dreams are dead. So Will Levis' long-term health is number one, but number two, the playoffs are dead. So what are you going out there and putting Will Levis at risk behind this offensive line for? There is no possibility to make the playoffs anymore. You're eliminated. So why would you put a less than 100% rookie quarterback Will Levis out there to get slaughtered when the playoffs are dead? Look, if the playoffs were still a possibility and Mike Vrabel is saying, hey, Will Levis wants to go out there and play and fight for the playoffs and I could at least buy it, but there is no playoff dream. And not only is there no playoff dream, the Titans are better off losing. They are better off losing the rest of their games. So whether it be Levis's long-term health or the Titans' situation as a team, both of them say, don't play Will Levis. And then finally, again, the offensive line. The offensive line is not going to get better. So if Will Levis comes back at less than 100% with no playoff dreams, needing to lose, What's going to happen to him? He's probably going to get hurt again or get hurt worse. The Titans avoided a catastrophe that Will Levis didn't tear his ACL, dislocate his knee, tear multiple ligaments. I mean, they cannot, they cannot tempt fate again by putting him out there. Jalen Duncan gave up three sacks and eight pressures against the Texans. Three sacks and eight pressures against the Texans. All right. I want to give you another stat here. Shout out to uh, uh, Wes on Broad on Twitter, Titan Stats. He says, or not says, but pointed out, the most pressures allowed by an offensive tackle this year in the NFL is Orlando Brown of the Bengals with 50 pressures. 50 pressures. The most sacks allowed by an offensive tackle. Makai Becton for the New York Jets, 11. So 50 pressures and 11 sacks are the worst performances by offensive tackles in the NFL this year. Titans left tackle spot with Dillard and NPF and Duncan and Raidens at left tackle. The Titans left tackle spot, 76 pressures, 20 sacks. So 11 sacks and 50 pressures are the worst individual numbers. The Titans left tackle has given up 20 sacks and 76 pressures. Think about that. Nine more sacks, 26 more pressures. The Titans have already given up 50 sacks this year. They gave up 49 last year. So, whether it be Levis's long-term health or short-term health, whether it be the Titans' situation as a team, or whether it be this offensive line, those are three great reasons to not put Will Levis back in the lineup. Period. Do not play him. So, if Levis doesn't play, though, should it be Malik Willis? Or should it be Ryan Tannehill? Let me know whether you think Levis should go back in this year. Year. Let me know who you think should play instead of Will Levis, Malik Willis, or Ryan Tannehill down below. I'm going to give you my answer. And towards the end of this show, we're going to talk about the offensive line, dive into some numbers there, because I think other than Peter Skaronsky, there may be one other guy who could be on next year's offensive line. Before we get into all of that, though, Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets. No question about it. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices. I hate these ticket places where they tell you what your price is and then you click to actually pay and it's like $50, $60 more for each ticket. You're not going to have that with Game Time. You get a great view from your seat, an accurate view. From your seat, that might be my favorite feature from Game Time. There are so many, though. I'm not going to do my rankings now. And Game Time has a best price guarantee. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. I've bought tickets for basketball games, baseball games, all kinds of stuff. And it's not just sports. I mean, they have football, basketball, baseball, but they have concerts, comedy, theater, and they have this thing called Zone Deals where you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And with the game time guarantee, you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, 
Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On NFL L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We just talked about why Will Levis needs to sit the rest of the season. Now I want to talk about who should play quarterback for the Titans in the final three games, Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill. Can't wait to dive into that. Also, at the end of the show, who should be on the Titans offensive line next year? We got a lot to dive into still. Thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, it's your team every day here on the Locked On Titans podcast. Also want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts like me from Locked On. Also, national shows covering every league like Locked On NFL, which I do on Thursdays. Make sure you guys check it out. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever. National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Be a part of history. But let me know down below, Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill, who do you want to see? For me, it's Malik Willis. My answer is clearly Malik Willis. Sit Will Levis the rest of the season and play Malik Willis in the final three games of the year. Now, do I think, do I think the Titans will do that? No. If Will Levis can't play and the Titans don't play Will Levis, which they shouldn't, then they are most certainly going to play Ryan Tannehill. Mike Vrabel has to sell to the locker room that they're trying to win games. Mike Vrabel has to pretend like there's still something to play for. You know, that's just his general disposition. That's what he's going to do. So do I think the Titans will play Malik Willis? No, I think they play Ryan Tannehill. But do I want them to play Malik Willis? Absolutely. You may ask why. Why, Tyler, would you want to see Malik Willis when we know that Ryan Tannehill is a better player? Well, let's go into it. Number one, let me talk about Tannehill here. So the upside of playing Ryan Tannehill is Ryan Tannehill was a a very solid member of the team for multiple years. He came in, helped the Titans reach some incredible heights that they haven't seen in 20 years. The Titans, some people say, the Titans owe it to Ryan Tannehill, to let him go out there and play and hopefully inflate his free agency value so he can get the best deal possible on the open market as a free agent this year. The Titans owe it to Ryan Tannehill to let him go play. Also, to win. We talk about the draft and all that. The Titans have two home games left, one against Seattle and then one against Jacksonville. And the owner of the team probably wants to win those games. So, to win, you let Tannehill inflate his own value, do him a favor, you win some games, sends the proper message to the locker room. We're about winning here. We would never intentionally go out there without the best opportunity to win. All right? There are culture things there. I get that. Those are the the upsides. But to me, the priority with that is Tannehill. You're prioritizing Tannehill's future. Let Tannehill go win you some meaningless games and ruin your draft pick. Let Tannehill get more money in free agency. Let Tannehill give himself a better situation next year. Okay. You say that the Titans owe Tannehill that. I say the Titans have paid Tannehill quite a bit of money and they don't owe him anything. What they owe him, they have paid him in cold, hard cash. All right, Tannehill has made quite a bit of money for his talent level in his NFL career, especially that big deal from the Titans. So on the flip side of things, why play Malik Willis? Well, number one, to lose so that you can lose because the Titans have five wins right now 
And if they finish 5-12, and 12, they have a great chance of being in the top six. And if you're in the top six, I think you're in a great spot to get one of those offensive tackles. So, number one, it gives you a better chance to lose. But you can't go out there and say that. Mike Vrabel can't go out there and say, hey, we need to lose the rest of these games. I'm playing Malik Willis. He can't say that. So what do you say? You say the truth. See, a skilled liar knows, a skilled liar knows that the best lies have elements of the truth. And Mike Vrabel is excellent at giving lies that have hints of truth that he can wrestle out of it from. All right? He's good at that. It takes one to know one. I see you, Mike Vrabel. I know what happens. So, you tell. Hey, we want to get a look at Malik Willis going forward. Can Malik Willis be our backup going forward? We didn't have a lot of time to develop Malik Willis this year because he was a backup and then he was the emergency quarterback. Not a lot of development time there with Will Levis getting a lot of the reps and so- So this is a great opportunity to let Malik Willis get those reps so we can evaluate him going forward for the future. He could be our potential backup going forward. But really, you know, one, we're going to lose these games. Two, at best, if, if a crazy occurrence happens and Malik Willis plays better than we've seen him play, well, now you either A, inflate his value so you might be able to get a conditional seventh rounder if he makes a roster or just something or hey maybe you do keep him and he's a decent backup while he's on his rookie contract for the next two years I think that's unlikely I think both of those positive outcomes inflating trade value or being a reasonable backup I think both of those are unlikely but either way you're probably gonna lose and that's what is more important right now for the Titans we've seen enough Not very many of these players are even going to be back on this team. The Titans redid 40% of their roster from last year to this year. It's probably going to be higher than that this year. So I wouldn't worry too much about the culture or the back and then the message. The people who matter know the culture. The people who aren't going to be back next year, who cares what they think? So to me, it is obvious. You sit Will Levis the rest of the year. You play Malik Willis. And you prioritize yourself and your team's future instead of Ryan Tannehill's. That simple. Again, let me know down below. Who do you want to see play? Do you want to see Will Levis sit the rest of the year? I got to talk about this offensive line because we know Skoronsky's going to be back. But I think there's one other player who could be on the Titans starting offensive line next year. And it maybe wouldn't be a disaster. Maybe. Maybe just maybe wouldn't be a disaster. Before we get into that, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team Faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or the resources to hire, thankfully. With LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, nearly 25 years as a Tennessee Titans fanatic, staff writer for Sports Illustrated over at alltitans.com, certified film junkie, breaking down the X's and O's with you guys 
every single week. We talked about why Will Levis should sit. We talked about how Malik Willis should play over Ryan Tannehill. Now I want to pivot to the offensive line because a big part of the conversation about quarterback is this offensive line. Before we get into it, I do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content for free all year long. Get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Titans podcast. Again, if you guys wouldn't mind, a little Christmas present to me. The show's always free. I don't ask for a lot. If you could get some five-star reviews on Apple iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay? Thank you very much. Appreciate all you guys tighten up. But we talked about the offensive line in the first segment with Will Levis when we talked about one of the primary reasons that the Titans shouldn't put Levis back on the field this year, and it's that offensive line. It's not going to get better. Again, the Titans have 50 sacks this year, already one more than they allowed last year. It's crazy to believe. The Titans' left tackle position has 26 more pressures than the most pressures by any offensive tackle in the NFL, has nine more sacks than any offensive tackle has allowed in the NFL this year. So absolutely despicable pass blocking and blocking in general from the Titans' offensive line. But, but, that doesn't mean that there still aren't some players from this year's offensive line who should be on next year. I don't think that the Titans necessarily have to replace all four starters outside of Peter Skaronsky. I think there could be one other holdover. One other. Now, I think that in reality, that one other holdover is probably going to be Aaron Brewer. Aaron Brewer is a plus run blocker. He's terrible in pass protection, but he's going to be cheap. He's young. He knows the team. He knows the system. He knows the locker room. I could see Mike Vrabel saying, hey, we'll bring back Aaron Brewer for $5 million if we put four better offensive line or three better offensive linemen around him next year. He could probably be the fifth best offensive lineman on a decent offensive line. I could absolutely see that happening. But for me, if there was one player other than Peter Skaronsky that I would like to see back on next year's offensive line, it's Dylan Raidens. And not at right tackle. All right? Not at right tackle. He's playing right tackle right now. That's what the Titans need to do. With who's available and who's healthy, he's he's probably the second best offensive tackle that the team has right now. Skaronsky would probably be better at left tackle, but he's not going to play left tackle uh, long term. So I get why they're not moving him there. So for the time being, Dylan Raidens is the best left tackle on the team or the best offensive tackle that's available on the team. But I don't think he should play offensive tackle next year. I think that he should play right guard. So Dylan Raidens was the Titans' best offensive lineman yesterday. He was first. And pass block grade by 17 points, had a 69.8, zero sacks allowed, only one pressure. He had a 69.4 run blocking grade, which was also first among Titans offensive linemen by four points. So he was first in pass blocking grade, first in run blocking grade, only gave up one pressure and zero sacks. Dylan Raidens has played pretty well at times. Now, do I think that Dylan Raidens can be an offensive tackle? No. At this point, we've seen enough. But do I think that Dylan Raidens can be just as good as Daniel Brunskill at right guard? Yes, I do. Yes, I do think that, as a matter of fact. And this year, Daniel Brunskill cost the Titans $5 million. Well, next year, Dylan Raidens is only $1.5 million. He's going to have a cap hit of $2 million with salary and bonus. So do you want to pay Daniel Brunskill $5 million or Dylan Raidens $2 million? In my opinion, I'd rather pay Dylan Raidens $2 million. And you have to think, Dylan Raidens came into this season coming off a torn ACL in Week 15. Like, imagine if Dylan Raidens tore his ACL right now. You wouldn't think that he would be playing anyways. So, to have a full, healthy offseason, Raidens looks as strong as he has looked in his NFL career. I just think that Dylan Raidens could give you serviceable Right guard play. Here's a reality that I think casual fans of football don't realize. A lot of people think that you need to have or that you're supposed to have a pro bowler in every spot. You're supposed to have an all pro in every spot. You simply can't construct a team that way. You're going to have some blue chip players. You're going to have some red chip players around them. And then you're going to have some average guys. On every single championship team in NFL history, there have been average-level starters where the team was able to save some money. Look, it's all about a budget. If you're doing tacos, you can't get Kobe beef. 
the most expensive cheese in the United States. Go out and get living lettuce. Go out and get incredible, organic, vine-ripened heirloom tomatoes. Get the most elegant onions you could possibly get. Get the sour cream from the tea of the of the cow. All right, you can't do that. You got money. Hey, we're going to spend on some good meat. You know, maybe we won't spend as much money on the produce. We'll go the non-organic produce. Like it, building a roster in the NFL is just like building a budget for your home. There are certain places where you decide, hey, I'm not going to have as good a thing here so I can have a better thing here. And in the end, it all balances out right. Like me, I'm not a big car guy. I don't give a dang about cars. If I hit the lottery today, I would drive my 2016 Kia Sportage for the next five years. I do not care about having a good vehicle. I don't care. As long as it gets me from A to B and back to A again, which people seem to forget all the time. They all want to go from A to B. They forget that you got to get back to A again, ladies and gentlemen. So I want something to get me from A to B to back to A. All right. What I would rather have is a better house with a studio for my podcast with a laundry room upstairs next to the bedrooms, with an island, with a nice exit room on the back porch, with a good backyard and a nice neighbor. I care more about things like that. All right? That's what I'm about. Like, so the whole point is you have to budget. And sometimes you need a $2 million right guard who may be the fifth best offensive lineman on your team, but you have a first-round pick at left guard, a first-round pick at left tackle, a high-priced free agent at right tackle, and then a a, a mid-round pick or another veteran free agent at center. Like, the Titans are going to have Aaron Brewer or Dylan Raidens on the starting line next year. There has to be a place on the starting offensive line where they get some bang for their buck, where they get some budget help. That's going to be Skaronsky on a on a rookie deal. That's going to be an offensive tackle probably on a rookie deal. And then you pay a veteran center to come in. You pay a veteran right tackle and you have Dylan Radins at $1.5 million, $2 million on the cap. That is the way to do it. You have enough talent, high-end talent around it that you can do it. I feel the same about defense with linebacker. If you pay a lot of money for two good pass rushers and you pay decent money for two good players in the secondary, You should be able to go cheap at linebacker and be able to go cheap at nose tackle and be able to go cheap at one of the interior offensive line spots and be able to go cheap at running back. Those are the places where you go cheap. One of your safety spots, your linebacker spots, your nose tackle spot, one of your interior offensive line spots, and your running back. That is where you go cheap in the NFL to get maximum roster value. So I want to see a first-round offensive lineman or a free agent at either of the tackle spots, whichever you want to go, Skaronsky at left guard, Dylan Raidens at right tackle, and then a mid-round pick or a free agent signing at center, or Dylan Raidens at right guard. So free agent, early round offensive lineman filling the tackles, Skaronsky and Raidens at the guards, and a free agent or another veteran, or a a veteran free agent or a mid-round pick at center. Like, if the Titans got Joe Alt, And then Powers Johnson from Michigan, which I don't think he's going to be there in the second round. But, hey, like, we're absolutely cooking. And there are a lot of you guys out there who watch more college football than I have. I don't dive deeply into the draft until later in the year after the season's over because I'm busy watching film of the Titans and analyzing the Titans. But you guys can let me know, too, you know, on some of your favorite college teams. There are interior offensive linemen in this draft who you can get in the second round or the fourth round to come in and compete with Aaron Brewer if that's what you want to do. I would prefer to go out and get a veteran free agent and maybe draft somebody late in the draft to bring in and let Aaron Brewer go. Honestly, I'd be okay with that. But let me know if you think Dylan Radens is worthy enough to be a holdover at right guard, not offensive tackle. He's not a tackle. We see that at right guard going forward. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Which I just might be. I just might be. But with that being said, folks, going to be back with you guys tomorrow to talk about whether Derrick Henry should be back with the Tennessee Titans. That is going to do it for me. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.